I want to give a special shout out to all my patrons, my Biblio Spran, Biblio Howlers, and Biblio Mansers. Thank you so much for supporting my hobby and passion even more. It means so much to me. Hi everyone, Patek here. Today's video will be my September book haul video. So today I will showcase you uh, all the books that I got in the month of September. And guess what? Uh, I already mentioned right that I wanted to do a book buying ban until the end of September, which means that I will start buying books again in the month of October. But well, I failed. I failed at the last days of September because of one book that I totally didn't expect or predict I would ever buy. But hopefully this is for good reasons. I will talk about that soon. But first, I will tell you five books that I pre-ordered a few months ago and they have arrived uh, this month. Four of them are actually manga volumes, so I'm going to talk about those first. And the first two are uh, volume four and volume five of Blue Lock. Blue Lock by Muneyuki Kaneshiro, illustrated by Yusuke Nomura, is currently one of my favorite ongoing manga series right now. It is truly incredible, intense, and the artwork is one of the best in the format. I have actually read through uh, these volumes. These are the Indonesian translated edition, which is uh, much cheaper. Uh, they're like $3 each, uh, 3 US dollars each. So yeah, they are much cheaper compared to the English translated edition, but I have actually read through the English translated edition for uh, Blue Lock up to the latest uh, volumes. I read them digitally first and I love it so much. Even if you don't like reading about sports, I still would highly recommend you to read Blue Lock. I think it is amazing and the anime adaptation, which from the trailer are looking absolutely incredible, will premiere in about two weeks from now, if I'm not mistaken, but it is in the month of October. So yeah, I am so looking forward to watching the anime adaptation. I hope that it will do the manga justice and if it does well blue lock is about to become super popular i expect that this will become the next haikyuu in terms of popularity and also how beloved it is personally speaking i think this manga is even better than haikyuu then the next manga that i got is record of ragnarok with an art by azichika scenario by shinya umemura and manga storyboard by takumi Fukui. This is volume number 9 of Record of Ragnarok. It is a very, very action-packed manga series. If you love reading actions, if you love well-written action scenes, this is the manga for you. Like, you, you don't even have to think about the story. The gods feel that humanity doesn't deserve any salvation anymore, so they decided they want to end humanity and begin a new phase. A new phase for humanity starting from the beginning again. But before that, they are given a chance. A Valkyrie demand that the strongest of humans have to battle the strongest of gods from around the world, from mythologies around the world and see which one will come as the winner. Out of 12 or 13 matches, if the side of humanity won more, well, they will be saved from total destruction. So pretty much the entire manga series is just a bunch of duels. And I loved it. I think it is done incredibly well. And this one, Record of Ragnarok, is much better than the anime adaptation. And then the last manga volume that I got is Witch Hat Atelier by Kamome Shirahama, and this is volume 9. Unlike uh, Record of Ragnarok or Blue Lock, I haven't started reading this series at all, but I've heard so many great things about it, and I have seen Kamome Shirahama's artwork well. Because of that, I decided to get the physical copies because I want to experience this entire manga series in physical format if possible. I really love the paneling, I really love the artworks, and from what I've heard so far about this series, I think it is very likely that I will at least have a great time reading this one. At least. I'm hoping that it will become one of my favorite manga series. And then the last pre-order that arrived this month is for a novel, and it is for The City of Mist by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. So yeah, this is Carlos Ruiz Zafon final book. Like, really the final. Carlos Ruiz Zafon has passed away, and I will always be sad over that, because I think Carlos Ruiz Zafon was incredibly gifted in crafting compelling story with unforgettable prose that will also ignite readers' passion to read even more, especially in The Cemetery of Forgotten Books, which to this day still remain as my favorite non-fantasy series, non-fantasy or sci-fi series of all time. And I think it will always remain that way. I love The Cemetery of Forgotten Books so much, and I'm not really sure when I will read uh, The City of Mist, because after this, I know that I won't be able to read any more new books by Carlos Rizafon. But fortunately, I do still have uh, plenty of books written by uh, Carlos Rizafon that I haven't read outside of Cemetery of Garden Books. I am so looking forward to reading uh, The City of Mist uh, someday. This is a collection of short stories with stories that takes place in the Cemetery of Garden Books series as well. 
And finally, and now let's talk about the book that made me broke my book buying ban, and it is for Shugi Bane. Shugi Bane by Douglas Stewart. I know pretty much nothing. I know pretty much nothing about this book. All I know about Shugi Bane is that uh, it won the 2020 Booker Prize Award. And after checking it further, after I got this book, after I checked further, apparently it won so many awards. And this is a debut novel by Douglas Stewart. Some have actually compared Shugi Bane to A Little Life in terms of how bleak and how depressing it is, but also it is beautiful at the same time. But the reason why I bought Shugi Bane without uh, knowing anything about it is because my friend opened a local bookstore in my city, Jakarta, and believe me, it is hard for a local bookstore to thrive in Indonesia. Super hard. And because of that, I want to support this local bookstore as much as I can anyway. And when I went there uh, last week, when I went to the bookstore last week, out of all the books they have available, Shugi Bane was the one that really got my attention somehow. So yeah, I decided to broke my book buying ban and buy this one. Hopefully whenever I get to it, this will end up being something that I love. So that's all the books that I bought and pre-ordered that arrived in the month of September. Now let's talk about the three books that I was gifted by my co-blogger TS when I went to Singapore at the month of September. And the first one is a physical arc, a physical advanced reading copy edition of The Girl and the Stars by Mark Lawrence. This is the first book in the book of the Ice trilogy. I've read The Girl and the Stars and in my opinion, uh, as far as the first book of a series goes for Mark Lawrence books, I think this one is the weakest. I gave this one a 3 out of 5 stars. But I also heard that the third book, uh, The Girl and the Moon, is one of Mark Lawrence's best books, supposedly. I am looking forward to reaching that book someday, but I still have to get myself a copy of the second book, The Girl and the Mountain, and of course the third book as well, The Girl and the Moon. But this will make a nice addition to my collection, but this will make a nice addition to my collection of Mark Lawrence books. I actually own uh, every fantasy books by Mark Lawrence except the one that I just uh, said, The Girl and the Mountain and The Girl and the Moon. My co blogger TS also gave me a copy, a UK hardcover copy of The Poppy War. Uh, the first book in the Poppy War trilogy by R.F. Kuang. The Poppy War is her debut novel and I really love this debut novel. I, I know that many readers now are torn over the Poppy War. They either absolutely loved it or absolutely hated it. And I think the result is always 50-50 and thankfully on my first read, back then when I first read the Poppy War, there weren't any hype for this novel yet. None. I read The Poppy War like a few months before The Poppy War was released uh, to public and I loved it. And the fact that back then I didn't get the hardcover edition of the Poppy War trilogy is a big regret of mine, especially the Illumicrate edition. The cover art by Jungshan Inc. looks so beautiful and I really hope that Jungshan Inc. will do more cover art in the future. But for now, I will just say thank you so much to my co blogger for giving me a copy of the Poppy War hardcover. And finally, the last book that I got from my co blogger it is Iron Gold by Pierce Brown. This is uh, the Goldsboro edition, so this comes with the red spray edges, which in my opinion looks super beautiful. And of course, this one is signed. Uh, hold on. Yeah. This is actually my first signed copy from Pierce Brown. I love Red Rising Saga. It is one of my favorite series of all time. Actually, Red Rising Saga is still, to this day, my favorite sci-fi series of all time. And I know that many have recommended me Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. I will read that next year, and then I will find out whether Sun Eater will top Red Rising Saga as my favorite sci-fi series of all time or not. But for now, Red Rising Saga still remain as my favorite sci-fi series. And Iron Gold, even though this is an unpopular opinion, I consider Iron Gold to be the second best book in the entire Red Rising Saga so far. Yeah, I know that uh, that is a very unpopular opinion because many fans of the series consider Iron Gold to be uh, the weakest book in the series. I disagree with that. I think Iron Gold is awesome and it is a great start to a new well, no longer a trilogy, a new quartet in the Red Rising saga. Loved it so much and I'm really grateful for this copy. I cannot wait to read Lightbringer and Red God next year. So that's all the books that my co-blogger gave me. As for sub published fantasy books, I got only two books uh, this month, in the month of September. And the first one is The Iron Crown by L.L. Uh, L. McRae. So this is the first book in the Dragon Spirits and I haven't read this one. I haven't read anything by L.L. L. McRae, but this looks really nice. And also, oops, the bookmail also comes with a bookmark and a few stickers. A dragon bookmark and a few dragon stickers. This is the bookmark. And also, this is the sticker. Hold on. Ta-da. And then this one. I think there's another one here. Ah, yeah, this is another one. Ta-da. 
And yeah, this copy is signed as well. There's a uh, there's a drawing of a dragon by the author, and I love it. Ta-da! Yeah, I am so looking forward to reading The Iron Crown someday. I've heard plenty of great things about this one. If I'm not mistaken, The Iron Crown actually made it uh, quite far in last year SPF View, so published fantasy block off that, that is held by Mark Lawrence. And yeah, I remember that The Iron Crown made it quite far. I hope to read this someday. Judging from the premise and also from the name of the series, there will be dragons in it. I think uh, the author is a huge fan of dragons in fantasy, and I look forward to reading the series someday. Thank you so much to the author for sending me a copy of The Iron Crown. And the last published fantasy book that I got is the Alchemy of Sorrow by Virginia McLean and Sarah Chon. Oh, edited by Sarah Chon and Virginia McLean. This is a fantasy and sci-fi anthology of grief and hope. This contains uh, short stories from Sonia M. Black, Angela Burt, Levi Jacobs, Intisar Kanani, Crystal Matar, Virginia McLean, Quen B. Olson, Carol Park, Madeline Rogers, Rachel Emma Shaw, Clayton Schneider, K.S. Viloso and M.L. Wong. I've heard plenty of great things about the stories contained in The Alchemy of Sorrow, and yeah, these stories supposedly wrestle with the experience of loss, of loved ones, of relationships, of a sense of self, of health, and to forge a path to hope as the characters fight their way forward. I look forward to reading this one someday. And the cover art is done by Zoe Badini. I think it looks really nice, and the cover art is also inside the book. Hold on. Ah, yeah, this one. See, the cover art is inside the book. And to make this even better, every title in Alchemy of Sorrow comes with a comes with an interior artwork like this one. And then I'm going to show you another one. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, this is for Sky of Fire by Sonia M. Black. And ta-da! It looks really nice. I think the artist is Kirsten Rosero, if I'm not mistaken. But just in case, I will check first. Ah yeah, here it is. The cover art illustration is done by Zoe Badini. Cover design is done by VM Designs. The map of grief and hope is done by Diana Sosa. And interior illustrations are done by Kirsten Espinosa Rosero. Knowing that its stories in this one is short, I think I will try to read uh, one title per day, which means I will be done with this one in about two weeks. Thank you so much once again to ML Wang and Virginia McLean for sending me a hardcover copy of The Alchemy of Sorrow. And now moving on to the final section of this book haul video, let's talk about traditionally published books that I got this month. Let's talk about the graphic novels first. Uh, first, I got the Bloodborne box set containing the first three volumes in the Bloodborne graphic novel adaptation. I have actually read through all of this. I will talk about them more in my monthly wrap up. But other than this, I also got the fourth volume. Yeah. The fourth volume is titled The Veil Torn Asunder. And again, I have read through this one. And I'm really thankful to Will from Titan Comics for sending me these graphic novel adaptations. Bloodborne, even though I think these graphic novels doesn't match the quality of the game, but they are still great addition to my collection because Bloodborne is one of my favorite games of all time. I love Bloodborne so much. If you actually take a look at my channel, my first videos on my channel, like so many years ago, well, they are on my playthrough of Bloodborne. <laughs> so yeah. And in addition to the graphic novels, I also got three postcards yeah, of the cover art of the first three volumes of the graphic novel adaptation. And finally, for a new Bloodborne graphic novel adaptation, which is titled The Lady of Lanterns. I think this is the first chapter, the first chapter in the first new volume of The Lady of the Lanterns. But I haven't read this one. I'm waiting for more chapters to be out before I uh, read through this new graphic novel adaptations of Bloodborne. I think the artworks inside the graphic novel adaptations are absolutely amazing. And then I also got a Loki by Melvin Burgess. I haven't read this one also. Uh, this one is a Loki retelling from the point of view of Loki. And I think this is uh, the author's first adult novel. Uh, at the back, it is written, Step into the ancient fir tree forest of Scandinavia and bear witness to legends as epic as those of the Greeks and the Romans. So yeah, it is, well, definitely about Loki. And I hope that the author will do a great job in telling why Loki decided to do what he did in the Norse mythology. And then the next book that I got is a sci-fi novel, and it is Blind Space. Blind Space by Jeremy Suzal. This is the second book in the Commons trilogy. And hey, there is my burp at the back of the book. This is my review. And yeah, I really enjoyed reading Stormblood. I think Stormblood is very much underrated. And uh, for those of you who love reading space opera or cyberpunk, something like that, I think this, uh, this series is worth taking a look. I haven't read Blind Space yet, and I hope that this will actually be better compared to the first book. 
Storm Blood, which I gave, I think, 4 out of 5 stars, which is pretty much uh, 8 out of 10 stars. I hope that Blind Space will be better. I actually wanted to read Blind Space, I think, at the end of last year, but I couldn't get to it because I remember there was an issue with the advanced reading copy that I got last year, but now that I own the paperback copy of this one, Thank you so much to Jeremy Suzel and Golangs for sending me a copy of Blind Space. I hope that when I get to this one, I will love it. Plus, this one actually comes uh, with a detailed summary of what happened in the previous book, in Stormblood. And also, as a bonus, this is another book where you can see me being killed off just like in Priest of Gallows by Peter McLean. At least, that's what I heard from the author Jeremy Suzel. And I look forward to finding out how I will be killed in blind space. The last two books that I got in the month of September, both of them are special edition, and the first one is Babel, Babel Illuminate Edition, Babel by R.F. Kuang, which is one of my favorite books of the year, one of my favorite books of all time, and I think this book is even better than the entire Poppy War trilogy, in my opinion. It is R.F. Kuang's best work so far, in my opinion, and I love it so much. Look at this. This comes with a slipcase. I have already done a detailed flip through of Babel Illuminate Edition. I will leave the link in the description down below. So if you want to know de more details about this edition, please make sure to check out that video. But so far, out of all the special editions that I've seen for Babel, and believe me, there are a lot. I think seven so far. And I think, and in my personal opinion, Babel is the best one so far. From what I've seen, anyway, I think it is even better than the Fairy Loot Edition and also the Fox and Wit Edition. I really love the cover art. Look at this. This is uh, the cover art done by Nico Delort, printed on the slipcase, and I think Illumicrate has outdone themselves with the creation of this edition. And just like always, if you're interested in subscribing to their 3 months and 6 months subscription, make sure to use my code PATRICK5 at checkout at Illumicrate website. I think it is worth taking a look if you love getting special editions. And finally, the last book that I got is the special edition for The Poison Song by Jen Williams. One of my favorite trilogies of all time is the We Knowing Flame trilogy, and I'm super glad that, and I'm super happy about this. This means that I own two sets of completed series from the Broken Binding now. The first one being the First Law trilogy, and now I have the We Knowing Flame trilogy as well. This comes with the spray edges, and more importantly, I'm just happy that Jen Williams finally uh, own a hardcover of the We Knowing Flame trilogy because this series is very much underrated and I think it deserves so much more readership. And lately, because of this re-release of the hardcover edition of the We Knowing Flame, uh, this trilogy has been gaining more readership and I'm really glad to see so many people love this series. I think this is indeed an incredible trilogy and look at this. Look at the naked hardcover. It is so pretty. And thank you so much to The Broken Binding for sending me this book. And if you haven't read The Winnowing Flame trilogy, I highly recommend it. Seriously, give it a try. It is so good. Well, yeah, that's the end of today's video. That's all the books that I got in the month of September. Do tell me how many books you got in the month of September and which of the books that I got in today's book haul video that you liked the most. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye. Lastly, I want to say thank you so much once again to all my patrons.